This is Dr. Sam Ludley from Attica Veterinary Practice in New York State, USA. Today we're going to talk about on-farm basics of calf nutrition. That is, what makes a difference in how we care for our calves in the first two months of life. Remember that the newborn calf is actually a moving target. Initially, she's a monogastric, just like us, just like pigs. And the gut changes from day to day, a very rapidly changing environment. For example, enzymes that aren't present at birth are present a week later and in both uh, volume and characteristics. And also remember that the shape of the gut changes tremendously in the first two months of life. Remember that at birth, the abomasum makes up 60% of the total GI tract, where she's an adult, the rumen will make up 80% or more. When we feed calves, where does it all go? Remember that maintenance is, that, that is replacing tissue and providing energy, always has the first call on anything we feed a calf. Whether it's milk, concentrates, hay, anything that goes into the calf in the front, it maintenance has the first call on energy and protein. Only when there's leftover protein and energy can the calf grow can she form new tissue. This graph shows how maintenance has a major role in how the nu nutrients are used. On the left side, it shows the number of liters that are fed per day. That's mixed at 125 grams per liter. Note that I have a, left, I have a smaller calf on the left, a larger calf on the right. The larger calf, 40 kilos. Let's look at the calf on the right, with typical of a Holstein Frisian animal. The shortest bar, that's 16C, you notice that it only takes three liters of the milk powder uh, uh, fed to meet the maintenance needs of that calf. And then the, if we want the animal, however, to grow 450 grams a day, that's the standard, that's the top of the bar, we want her to grow 450 grams a day, we not only have to feed enough to meet the yellow bar, that's maintenance, but also the blue bar on top. So if we have a 40 kilo calf, it's 16 C, this graph shows it takes more than five liters a day to have to expect the calf to, to gain 450 grams a day. What happens when it gets cold? 4 C typical of winter weather. The yellow bar got taller. I hope you can see that. It's the, it, the, uh, for, the uh, for example, for the uh, 40 kilo calf on the right, you'll see that the yellow bar has now gone above four liters a day. If it gets quite cold, below freezing, then the yellow bar goes up even more. So what we're saying is maintenance always comes first. If you're feeding four liters a day to a this size calf in its 4C, she will lose weight. She's not gaining enough, uh, she's not receiving enough food even to gain anything at all. So let's go ahead beyond this. Remember first that colostrum is food. It's an excellent uh, feed for calves. It's highly digestible and it's loaded with energy. Now, I recommend, uh, if you, it is convenient on your farm, to bucket the second, third, and fourth milking from these fresh animals and save that milking uh, for the youngest calves. And make certain that you remember, colostrum is good food, needs to be clean. I like to feed it within a half an hour after it's collected from the dam. But if you can save it out through the fourth milking, it's wonderful food. Well, what, else, what about beyond that? You're probably feeding milk or milk replacer. You have to remember that whatever you feed needs to be clean, wholesome feed. No uh, contamination. That means clean nipple bottles or clean buckets. It's important that we be consistent in our feeding, that we feed the same temperature every feeding. Ideally, if we're mixing milk replacer, we're using exactly the same amount of powder uh, every single feeding. 
And finally, we want to remember, uh, remember the chart before? Yes. We want to feed adequate volume. There is a place on the web that you can go. I show the website here. You go there and you click on United Kingdom Calf Facts in the calf, fair, calf Care section. There is a consistency checklist that you can find there that would, may help you in remembering all the things that make consistent feeding. So remember, milk is clean, we're consistent, and there's adequate volume. So what are the, what's the question about feeding enough? Well, it really in part depends on your growth goals. Are you looking for 400 grams a day? Five, six, seven? Of course, remember, maintenance first, and then what is left over will be used for growth. So as you more than meet the maintenance needs, then you'll get growth, and you're going to have to feed according to your goals. If you have very modest goals of 400 grams a day, then we're talking about probably at least four to five liters of whole milk or the same amount of milk replacer. Seasonality of maintenance needs, it says on this slide. Of course, remember the graph? Remember how the yellow bars got taller when the weather got colder? So if you expect, you're expecting to get 500 grams of growth a day, and it's summertime, remember you're going to have to feed more in the winter if you're going to maintain that same level of growth. I put here the word readiness. It's not too clear a word, but it means that the, the calf has to be physiologically developed enough to digest her liquid feed. So don't expect a calf that's two days old to effectively consume five or six liters as effectively as an older calf. I, my personal experience in feeding calves, I was able to get calves uh, by the time they were two to three weeks old up to eight liters a day. But uh, not everyone can do that. Uh, there are lots of things you have to do right, especially colostrum management, in order to be able to feed larger volumes. But the calf must be ready. She must, her gut has to develop enough to digest larger volumes of liquid feed. Well, how do we want to uh, uh, set standards? Well, the Dairy Calf and Heifer Association, that's DCHA, has set out gold standards uh, for the Holstein breed. And you see here uh, we have standards for calves six months and then older. The growth rate standard for Holstein calves, large brain calves, that we've suggested 24 hours to 60 days of age is to double their birth by 60 days, that birth weight. 40 kilo calf turns into an 80 kilo calf. There are other standards here, but the important thing is that's a standard that suggests seven to 800 grams per day gain. Again, going back to the graph, if you're going to expect uh, even 450 grams a day, you can see that even in the best conditions, summer conditions, for a 40 kilo calf, those are the three bars to the right, and it will take at least five kilos of, or five liters of uh, milk replacer or milk uh, to achieve that goal. So it does require feeding rather generous amounts of liquid feed, milk or milk replacer, if you're going to achieve uh, these gains. If you expect uh, seven or 800 kilos, then remember it will take much more than what shows on this graph. What are the limits to feeding? Well, I write a newsletter called Calving Ease. It's found at the website you find at the bottom of the slide. And it, this issue talked about what best management practices are necessary uh, in order to get Large, uh, successfully feed large volumes of milk. And I include some tips for uh, making it work. By the way, Audrey here, uh, Audrey is uh, not a two-foot midget. Uh, she, she's she's a, a good-sized woman, and you see the size of the calf that she has next to her, and that calf is seven weeks old. So what about feeding concentrates? Note in the slide on the left, 
this young calf has only enough concentrate in the bottom of the pail so that she can just push her nose around and nibble on it. From a practical point of view, I suggest you feed to appetite. That means only putting enough in there that maybe she would eat it all in one day. Uh, also, from a practical point of view, if you only put just one handful in the bottom, you don't feel guilty about dumping it and feeding it to large, older calves. Note on the right, this person has adopted uh, the cane feeders that uh, are self-feeders for the youngest calves. And they put three to four kilos in at a time, and the calf can nibble as at their pleasure. But again, concentrates are very important, and we'll go ahead and show in a subsequent slide some guidelines. So now this slide shows I'm suggesting that as guidelines, start feeding concentrates right away. Feed only a handful at the beginning. Change it every day. Don't say, well, we'll change it once a week because she's not cleaning it up. No, fresh every day. Again, I talked about feeding to appetite. Well, why are we feeding concentrates? Because when they ferment in the rumen, they release a substance called butyrate that drives papillae growth, those little fingers on the inside of the rumen that absorb nutrients. And they're essential for a cough in order to grow. Now, I'm going to show you an image. Let me, let me advance the slides here. There. Now, that image, notice the dark color of the tissue and the generous ribbing that's there. By the way, this is the section of the rumen where the esophageal groove is located. When those ridges come together, they form the esophageal groove. Remember, this calf had generous amounts of water and concentrate. This calf was fed only milk, no concentrate. Oh my goodness. Again, she was fed concentrates. She was not fed concentrates. I'm going to show you another image. This is uh, the calf that received, uh, uh, go ahead, see that calf? This, this calf received milk only. This calf had hay. So again, I'm going to show you the image of the calf that was fed only milk, no concentrates. OK, here we go. Milk and hay. Hay does not help with the development of villi. Ah. This is a calf that was fed concentrates. And the concentrates ferment, ferment in the rumen with water and provide butyrate that drives the growth of that tissue. OK, now, what? just to remind you, you can't have fermentation if you don't have water. Water every day, fresh water every day. Now, let's just review. I started by saying that this cough is a moving target, that the uh, intestinal tract is changing rapidly. So we have to remember that as we're feeding calves. Where do the nutrients go? First to maintenance, and then for growth. I tried to suggest that colostrum is an excellent feed, and I like to feed it the first three or four days. I suggested that we be very, very consistent in our milk and milk replacer feeding, and we feed enough to meet our growth goal. I suggested that we feed concentrates in a limited amount at the beginning and then feed to appetite. And finally, I suggested that all of this fermentation won't take place unless we provide free choice water every day. So just in summary, this is who I am. I'm at the Attica Veterinary Associates. And there are a couple of websites on here. And uh, I also uh, write a blog called Cabs with Sam. I've enjoyed talking to you today, and uh, have a good time rearing your calves. Goodbye.